Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm actually on my own this week, so I thought I would, now the dogs have literally just settled down, I thought I'd pop along and create another pro project with my new release. Now the new stamps were released on Create and Craft uh, a week ago, last Monday, and a few of you are starting to receive them now. So I've literally just created a snippet, <coughs> excuse me, I've just literally created a snippet in the previous video using this stamp set. So these stamp sets, I've got a lovely array of florals, backgrounds, textures and sentiments. Now, all these stamp sets, I just adore the buttercup, all these stamp sets are available now on the Create and Craft website. So all of them are available. You can either buy singles or you can buy the bundle, she says. I don't know what that is in the packaging. But you can either buy the bundle or you can buy individuals on the All and Create website, allandcreate.com. I'll actually leave the link in the description box. Um, but what I thought I'd do is I thought... I might come along and create a card with this one here, one of the, the larger stamps. So I use, I'm literally going from one extreme to the other. I use the smaller stamp, although the A7 stamps are not really small. They're sort of over three inches. They're a really good size. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use this size here. I've also got stencils as well that are in the collection. So there are stencils. You've also got the outer bits to these as well. So the stencils are also available on the All and Create website. So there's some, some beautiful designs. Even if I say so myself, I'm really proud of those. Right, let me just move these down. Let's try and move things out of the way a little bit, just so that we've got some space. So my plan is to use this one. Now it's an A5 stamp set and I'm really chuffed with this because it's something a little bit different. Is it that one? I don't think it's that one. Is it that one, Tracy? Let me just check. It's that one. Sometimes I get prototypes, you see. So, so I've just got the stamp set here. And it's a really good size. And my idea is to use this one or this one. They're both beautiful. The stamps are falling over. So they're both beautiful. But it, the hardest bit is deciding what to use. Do you know, I might use that middle one. That, honestly, that is the hardest bit. So let's grab a border acrylic block. You could use your A5's acrylic blocks. So I'm going to use that one. And if, if we move the clear film out of the way, and I'm using a four, four and a half by six and a half inch piece of white card, Pink Frog Smooth Card. And what I'm thinking is, I don't want to do anything too complicated. I just thought I'd spend a little bit of time just being creative. So I've got the stamp here and you can see it makes a bold impact on the card. It's just beautiful. The sentiment love grows here because Tracy crams in everything is actually attached to the stamp here. But you can actually cut that up away if you wish. You can cut that bit away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just ink my stamp up. Just give that a bit of ink. And then just as I've inked it, I've just thought, oh, I've had another idea. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp it just so that I can take a look at the design. Because sometimes it's nice just to stamp the imagery out and just look at it in its entirety. 
just to to see what you've actually got in a stamp now this this black area is here because i want it to, to appear like it's been carved out of the background so i was quite pleased with how those turned out as if i've literally carved the floral within the background now you don't have to stamp this image in black i wonder if i've got my ipad so i can just show you let me just grab my ipad see if i can show you you don't have to stamp it in black let me see if i can find the photo for you albums recent do you like i'm telling you what i'm going through like you need to know oh dear me right let's you see if you look at this one this is the other stamp in the set and i've not stamped it in the black so it's been stamped in the green so it looks completely different when you stamp it in a color but it's nice to show you different ways to use it so this is what the stamp looks like absolutely love that it's just a lovely stamp and that's just stamping it for the first time with no priming so pretty good image may use that floral as well so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take a piece of low tack tape and i'm going to place it on my stamp just so that i can mask out a little bit of the stamp area so i'm just using the low tack tape just to mask out some of the area of the stamp the idea then <laughs> is that I won't ink that area. I do apologise <coughs> if I just cough every now and then. I've suddenly developed a tickle. The instant my family go away, you can rely. I get a sore throat or something, but I've, I've developed a tickle that I just can't get rid of. So what I'm doing is I'm inking the stamp this time. And this low tack tape here prevents me from inking that area, but it means I can ink the rest of the area up to that low tack tape. And it doesn't matter if I touch that low tack tape because underneath won't get inked. Okay, so just giving the stamp a little bit of a different look. So you obviously don't want to keep that on there because you don't want this splodge of black ink. So we'll just remove that. And the little bit of an image you've got there is when we, we inked it before. And the black ink is the excess ink. If you didn't want to do it that way, what you can do is just grab some kitchen roll. Because obviously, when you, when you do it with the low-tack tape, obviously I'm going to end up with straight lines. So what I'm going to do now is take my kitchen roll Let's just make sure that's all dry. You can see that's all dry there. That was just the edge. So what I'm going to do now is go into these straight lines and I'm just going to just remove some of the ink from those straight lines, just so that it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Ooh, doesn't, don't I sound posh? So just, dab that so you can see i'm just removing a little bit of the ink just so it's less harsh that's all right. so what i'm going to do is i can just tilt the stamp and i can see where i've inked the stamp if there's one area i can see i've just missed a little area there you can literally just tilt the stamp and see where it's glossy so what I'm going to do now is just decide where I'm going to place my stamp. So I think I'm just going to place it here pretty much central, but not completely central. So I'm going to allow that ink just to absorb into the card. So I'm not pressing too hard. I'm just allowing it to absorb in there. I've got no other layers on there. So that means that the card is relatively absorbent. Now it is a super smooth card, so it's not the most absorbent card, but it's not a slick surface. So it does have some absorbency. And the pink frog 
smooth card takes the stamps beautifully. So all I'm doing is I'm just giving a nice even pressure just over the stamp, just to make sure that that stamps evenly. I've got the All and Create acrylic blocks, so I can just leave that so that I can get this area here. If you struggle with dexterity problems, the All and Create acrylic block really works beautifully for just helping you out with the image. And what I love now is I've got a gap. I've got a gap in between my flower, which makes it look completely different. Obviously, I'm going to use that gap. I'm not going to leave it as is. I am definitely going to use it. So what I'm going to do now is we had this flower here. I just want to see if I want to cut the floral out. So I'm just deciding whether I want to cut it out. So what I do is I'm going around the area of black and just leaving a little border. So let's just go around. You can just guess, it doesn't have to be precise. So I'm just cutting around. So by doing the stamp this way, it gives me a slightly different look. Plus, I like it to have lots of variety. I love my florals, which you obviously will know by now. I also love my backgrounds. Um, and I love lots of different colours, vintage, very bright, vin uh, very, you know, pastel. I've got no preference. So I do like many varieties of project. But I like the stamps just to have a little bit of variety if we can. But what I also like to do is I also like to show you how you can change your stamp a little bit just so that it looks a little bit different. Obviously, I want you to use it the way it was designed, but I also like to give you alternative ideas. It makes me happy when I can use a stamp in a different way. So just cut around. And I mean, I know it's not the most interesting thing to do is to watch somebody cutting out. But believe it or not, I do have some beginner crafters as well. And I do get questions, you know, about cutting out as well. So we just need to be all inclusive and just remember everybody in our videos. Right, there we go. So I've now got my floral. I'm just going to get something to wipe my hands, just in case. But what I've got now is I've got a floral that looks completely different. So if you wanted, you could literally just cut out loads of these florals like this and have them just like that. And that in itself, without the background, you could create lots of those and just draw your own stem. So instantly you've got something different to do with the stamp away from this. So it just gives you lots of different ideas, which I'm going to colour that in. It takes me longer to find out. You could have it off centres so that if you twist it, it looks like you've got more florals under there. Let me just lift that because you can't see. So you can have it like this, where it just lays on top. But if you turn it once, it looks like you've got more of a floral. So I may just do that, but we, we will we will see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my stamps just to see. Uh, sending sunshine. You see, that's the perfect sentiment. So here on the, the one with the bluebell, it's called send shun <laughs> I can't say that. Send sunshine. Um it's actually got amongst the flowers. Well, amongst the flowers seems rather apt for this. So if I take this stamp, amongst the flowers. Let's just grab a little A7 acrylic block. 
Now, if you're going to put your hands all over this, just give that a blot, just so that you stop it from smudging. Let me just move that out of the way. So I've got amongst the flowers, and it's a very bad habit of mine because I repeat the sentiment. That's just something I do. So now I can put amongst the flowers inside here. I can put it here or I can put it there. So it's entirely up to you. You see, I've just thought of something. This is what, this is what happens when you're inspired. If I take my little mouse, so my cute mouse, 811, Let's take the cute mouse first. But this is why stamps always bring me so much joy. Because I love the twiddling and faffing and it just, it just makes me happy. Like I'm doing now when I can't decide what side of the acrylic block I'm putting it on. That's it. So now I can put any of my little miniatures in. So you could put the ants in there the mouse, little birds, you could put lots of things in there. So it just gives you lots of ideas. So I'm then going to add the mouse here, like so. And just allow that ink just to soak in to the project. Let's just place the mouse back. And obviously when you're touching stamps like me you're taking it off the acrylic block just so you can use it again make sure you clean your hands so now i can put amongst the flowers just there or do i put it there now i want it in that gap that's why i created the gap so let's have amongst the flowers now you're changing the way your stamp looks this is why i adore stamps so much and this is why me me personally i can never have enough stamps because they just inspire me in different ways and i love having the variety so what we've got now is a floral that looks completely different just love it now you see now i'm asking myself do i want the other mouse can i get him in there How, how, can you, how, how can anybody faff so much? I can faff for England, trust me. So let's just ink that up. And if you don't want to, you see, if you don't want to fussy cut, I'm showing you how to use the stamps by building. You're not building a scene as in building, you know, different things to show clouds and things like that. But you're building something just with black imagery. If you don't want to cut anything out, you can just colour it. So just add that there. So what I'm trying to show you is that you can always adapt stamps to suit the way that you create. I adore that. So I'm always trying to find ways to make your stamps enjoyable and to show you that I may give you a design that's like this just completely let me see just completely with all that area black and if you look at it you can see it here it looks completely different the way I've done it also you see how I've cut this flower out here adhere that back up at the back of the page and you could also use that as a project as well quite easily you could use that as a project and you've cut that out and you could put colour underneath. So I'm showing you different ideas that you can do with the stamp. This for me is why I adore stamps. Right. And what I want to show you is that you don't have to have complicated techniques. Um, having your, you know, your products right in front of you would help. Oh, it is right in front of me. Oh, I do you know I'm dangerous at times. But what I'm trying to show you is that 
you don't have to have complicated techniques. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use Mermaid Lagoon. And you've seen me do this plenty of times. But for me, if I learn one little snippet of an idea from a video, I feel that I've done my job if you learn one snippet of an idea. It doesn't have to be about complicated techniques all the time. Now, you've seen me do this plenty of times, but I'm going to use the blue, which is the Mermaid Lagoon. And Tracy has to frantically sort of look at a packaging because names just don't stick in my head at the moment. Oh, poor old soul I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go round just with the blue. So I'm bleeding that out with some water just so that it bleeds out to nothing. So I'm taking the darkest of the colour right towards the edge of the stamp. That's where the darkest colour is going. And then to just blend that out, I'm just using my water to blend that out massively. So let's just and take a little bit more. But I think it's important that, you know, as a designer, I show you that, you know, the stamps, they're not just chucked together. I do try to think about how they're going to be used and how often we can use them. But for me, this is not just something I do for a living. I also do this as a hobby because I enjoy it. So, yes, I earn my living from it, but it's not just something I do just because you have to do it. I do it because I enjoy it. So just blending that out. Let's go a little bit darker where that black area is. And then just blend out. So just going around with the blue. But doesn't that look completely different as a stamp? Looks totally different. But if I'd have taken that area out on the stamp, it's a bit it would be less versatile because you wouldn't be able to have it as the whole then. This way I can have it lots of different ways. Let's just blend that out. So I'm just making sure it's a little bit darker just right in where the black area is and then just use some water just to blend that out there we go again pick up that dark area just so it's a little darker Again, I'm just making it a little darker, sort of towards the edge, just to give the depth. Now just go back around again, just to blend that out. And in real life, when you look at the projects, you can see the depth closer to the floral. Just need a little bit more of that ink of the Mermaid Lagoon. Sometimes when I'm when I'm colouring, I lose myself. And sometimes you can forget to speak. It's hilarious. Because I might remember to speak, Tracy. It's not as easy as you think, speaking and then losing yourself while you're colouring at the same time. So I'm just adding sort of a little bit more depth, just, just at the edges. Just blend that out a little bit. There we go. So for once, I will just clean most of that ink off. Let's just give that a wipe up. You could mop that ink up 
with another piece of card if you wished. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my, do you know where does this time get? How can 25 minutes go that quick? So I'm just going to put a little bit of ink tense pencil just underneath my little mice. And just a little bit of water and just blend that out just so that they're just not floating in midair. I can't have floating mice. Right, so then I'm just going to add a couple of white details just to my mice, just to give them a little more life. So just giving them my... What I'm going to do then is I'm going to colour this floral. Right. So I'm going to colour the floral with some my eco lines. So I've got, this is where I have to test the colours because I never remember which one's which. So let's just put them together and then I can judge. That is more pinky, I'd say. But which one is that? Is that more pinky? Yes. So I'm going to go for the scarlet and the reddish brown. Always test it on a piece of card that you're actually using so that you can see the results. Just bring that in just because we'll need that. So then I'm going to colour my floral. With the scarlet and if I just give you the numbers scarlet is 334 for the eco lines I love the eco lines because they're very easy to use and just color and I want something nice and bright So the idea here is to show you how just to create something a little bit different. So I'm then going to use the reddish brown, which is 422, just to give me some darkness, just to give some depth to the project. And then I will just water that out by using a wash of the same colour. So I'll just pick up the, the reddish colour again and just wash that out. Just so that I've got no lines. And I do, I do love the eco lines for their ease of use and the fact that you know you don't have to be an expert colorist and you don't you don't feel intimidated well I don't anyway so what I'm going to do now so that is yeah so what I'm going to do it now is use my white gel pen and I'm always make sure it works because that often helps because so if, if you've been using it on another project and it's got any layers stuck to the tip it's just a good idea just to get that working again. I'm just adding a little more. There we go. And then really, you're asking your pen to do quite a bit by trying to add white on top of the wet. But we will we will we'll push our look and just add a bit of white just to our petals just to just to give it a little a little pop and what you can do is once your project has dried go back in again and add the white because obviously it's going to absorb some of the color so you can pop back in so this is the flower that's it's I'm going to offset that like so. But what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take 
my miniature stamp set, which is Miniatures 756, because I love the little text stamp in there. I love to add little light layers of text. It's just, I've got bits of hair everywhere. Right. So I'm just going to add some sort of, let's move that for now, light layers of the text. And I'm just going to sort of, if I add the text, first generation, second generation, third generation, it looks like I'm just adding to the stamped image. It's, just, it's like the stamp was always like this when it wasn't. I'm just increasing the layers of the stamp and how it's seen, which I absolutely love. I love just changing things a little bit, just so it looks a little bit different. It makes me happy. Let's just build this here. And then I'm going to sort of twist it just so it looks like there's more more petals there and it i always find it looks a little bit better if you you just pinch the petals a little bit it just looks it's you know so they're not, they're not all perfect it just looks better for me okay so i'm just going to add a little bit of my pin flare to the floral I don't have to add too much. So find out where the original is, which I think it's is it that way. Yeah. So if I turn it slightly, it'll just look like I've got more of a floral and just change the look a little bit. So what I'm going to do then is just add some splatters. I'll just add. I promised myself I was going to get a new Posca pen. Did I get a new Posca pen? No. Oh, I have. I can see one now. Oh, no. Let's look. I did buy myself a new Posca pen. Sometimes question whether... Let's just, oh, you can't make it up, can you? This is a new pen. You've just seen me undo the pen and it doesn't pump up and down. Oh, it's working now. That's it. So I'm just priming the pen. So I need to make sure that some paint comes out. So it's starting to flow now. Let's take the plastic off the lid. Now, you never thought you're going to watch a video where Tracy pulls a Posca pen. Out of its packaging. So I'm just priming that Posca pen. So just giving that a little bit of a shake. Just to get that paint flowing and mixing. Now the paint is beginning to look like paint rather than water. You don't really want to splatter water all over your card. There we go. So now we should be able to... There you go splatter rather easily very easily no problem at all so let's just clean that up so you always have to sort of get your posca pen working you can't expect it to splatter without sort of priming it first so there's our 
let's just dry our area. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my tickets 757. I'm going to add a little ticket. Again, just showcasing how you can use all the stamps together. I'm going to use one of the tickets. Again, not an overpowering stamp. It's a lovely little stamp just to add a little extra to your design. Have we got a little, have we got enough room on here? Nothing like don't waste in any, don't waste any card, Tracy. So just take just the one thing you need to remember to do which i didn't is just remember that you need to cover your sentiment up because you don't want it so that you can't read the sentiment so just make sure you can read the sentiment so just sort of cover it up with a little bit of paper or let's just Add that. There we go. I love these little tickets. I love having, not that you've guessed, have you? I love having little bits and pieces that I can cut out to add to the design that just make the designs a little bit different. Let's move this out of the way. There we go. And I'm just going to sort of crumple my ticket up a little bit, just so it's not, I don't want a perfect ticket. I want one that's a little bit sort of distressed and crumpled. And then there's one stamp I don't think I pulled out. Bear with me. Um, there it is. So I then want to use one of my favourite alphabets at the moment because I love the circles. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the F for floral, for flowers and floral, because you've got the flowers on there. So I'm going to take, so I just keep picking up like little bits of fibres everywhere. So, have you know, I don't know whether you did, but when I pick up an alphabet stamp, do you know what the first thing I do is? A, B, C, D. That's what I do every single time I pick up an alphabet stamp. There's no hope for me really, is there? So I'm using the F for the floral. I just love the size of them and the fact that you know, it can become an embellishment, not just an alphabet. So I'm just going to go round just with the circle, fold the circle around. I'm just keeping my fingers away just from the letter because if you haven't blot blotted the stamp, stamped image, you don't want it to smudge. Now I've left a little bit of a border on purpose so that I can use my scissors to distress. Now I know some people are very unhappy when you use scissors to distress the edges. I personally don't know why, you know, because, but I have to give a warning out. If you've got distressing tools, use distressing tools, not scissors, so that you don't cut your hands. So I'm just distressing with the scissors. Right, I'm just going to get a little bit of twine Bear with me. So I've got a little bit of red twine, which I must have had goodness knows how many years. Well, I, I can't tell you how many years. It's just a ridiculous amount. So I've got some twine that I am now, which you'll be so pleased, is I'm going to faff. I'm going to faff for England because it's just 
just what I love doing. So, bear with me because I'm going to drive you all mental. There's no point me trying to fasten that with these stupid long nails that need cutting. Bear with me. Let's grab. So what I'm going to do is grab an index clip. And I'm going to, the index clip can keep the twine on there. Doesn't matter how much you bend that ticket, it's not a problem. The twine's got that, so it's got to look right or else that will drive me mad. So, I want to add, don't move your flower. This is what I end up doing, I get all excited. You can't cover your sentiment up, Tracy. Let me just. I often, yes, I want it there. I often faff with my little bits and pieces. But what I want to do is use the scarlet and then just add a little bit of colour to the to the circle. And I'm just going to take the reddish brown. It was definitely reddish brown, wasn't it? Yeah. So I'm just going to add the reddish brown just to give me a little bit of depth. And in exactly the same way, I'm just going to just blend this with a, a watered down, a wash, not watered down, a wash of the scarlet so i'm just blending it with sort of a watered down version of that color and then if you want to add a little bit more color you can still add more the the card is wet so it doesn't take much for them to just blend that line out there we go I like it all to coordinate and then this is where I really do faff so I want the I want the mouse just hidden a little bit right so I want it like that I hope you talk to your projects as well because I do I don't want that I talk to my projects So I can just see the little mouse. Let me just, I always look through the camera. It always sort of gives you. And then I'm going to tuck this. Sort of behind. There we go. For the florals. Again, I would definitely sort of spend a couple of minutes adding white touches, especially when everything is dry. You, I would definitely spend a couple, of, like for instance, I'd want to put white on here, but I'm probably asking a little bit too much just to, so I would sort of go over the white again. The white always just brings it to life, just so that you can see the floral. So what I'm going to do then is just add, what is that? A little bit of shading just underneath. You see, obviously you would wait for everything to dry. I'm just adding a little bit of shading under the circle and a tiny bit of shading 
just under the ticket. So we just have to make sure that that brush is clean. And just add a little bit of shading under there. A little bit of shading just under there. All the little details, just finish your card off beautifully. And sometimes I just like having fun just for the sake of creating something. It just makes me happy. But when the card is totally dry, so say it's dry after a few hours, I go back in with the white elements. Also then, I'm going to add that to a black mat because that will make the black on the card really pop. So we're going to add that as well. And I think I'll make another one of these cards using a different image. So now you've got an excuse to use all your little images or sentiments with this floral, which works quite nicely. Let's just add that there, like so. So that's a quarter of an inch bigger, the mat is. And then I've got a five by seven inch card blank. So I'll add that five by seven card. There we go. Just make sure your card is definitely facing the right way. So easy to make an upside down card when you're concentrating. Trust me, I know. So just add that to the white card blank. And just so that you can see that, it just gives it a whole different feel from what the original stamp was, which I absolutely love. So I hope you've enjoyed the inspiration for today and I shall see you all soon. Bye for now.